Welcome back to the Christian Life Podcast, where we have good conversation for practical Christian living. Today, we're on episode number 25, and we are your hosts, Michael Brazier and Art Nuremberg. And today, we're going to be talking about what it means to be persistent in prayer, or per- perseverance in prayer. Um, I think one of the Bible verses that comes to mind immediately when I think of perseverance is that verse in Luke, or those two verses in Luke, and I'm just going to read it. It's Luke 11, 9 through 10. And it says, And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and those who seek, find. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Um, We're called as believers, as followers of the Lord, to persevere in prayer, to pray. Um, And it's more so than just just asking for random things, but committing to something. Right. There's that idea. Um, can you talk about what, first of all, what is this verse talking about within the context? And then what, what is the Lord talking about in terms of perseverance? Okay. The uh, verse itself come, there's an illustration right before that of the band who goes and needs some, needs bread, mm-hmm. goes out at night and the, knocks on the door and the guy doesn't want to open the door but he keeps on knocking so that the the context of the verse is in terms of something that a person is he needs to have and he's determined to have and he's focusing on and he continues to focus on that until he receives so that's the it's not about um praying about things or maintaining a prayer life or anything along those lines. It's about particularly going to God and trusting him to meet a particular need. So that, that's, that's the context of the thing. And it, it's a tremendous verse because it's, it's one with great promise. Everyone who does keep on knocking, as it persists, keeps on knocking, they all... We'll have the door open that everybody who keeps on seeking will find. All right. So it's it's that it's very positive on that. And it's it's a feature of prayer that we, we do need to spend some time thinking about because promise is there that if you keep on going. Mm-hmm. Now a a problem comes up in the comparison of passages. Because earlier in, in the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord says, don't use meaningless repetition. Don't just keep on saying things. All right? So we have to separate this persistence mm-hmm. from somehow the fact that we can sort of badger God into doing something. Mm-hmm. So and that's, yeah. that's not where he's going. Mm-hmm. Because in both cases, he says, that, wouldn't, a, wouldn't a father give a gift to his son? Mm-hmm. So in both cases, there is this, this thought that there's no reluctance on the part of God to answer prayer, <clears throat> that the that the issue is there's some, it rests somewhere else, and that that leads us in our own um, consideration of the word to a question because the Lord doesn't answer that question. What is what is the resistance there? Why doesn't God answer it right away? What are we doing? that stops a God who is on our side from doing what we're asking him immediately. Why do we have to ask and keep on asking? And mm-hmm. that the Lord doesn't really answer. In the, he just tells mm-hmm. you to keep on doing it. Yeah, He tells you it's not because, I mean, it's not because the Father's not with you. Mm-hmm. It's not because he isn't listening. Mm-hmm. But why is it? All right, and so... As we are looking at that, we, we do come to a bit of a <laughs> yeah, like a crossroads in yeah. our understanding of like okay, what is what is the heart? But I think going a little bit further back in the context mm-hmm. is in Luke, we also see Jesus. It, he gives us the um, the Lord's prayer right. early on, and so it's kind of the two go right. together, which would assume that it's a it's a daily prayer. It's this um, continual almost this continual attitude of reliance right. on the Lord. Right. Would you... Yeah, I think that's part of the, uh, that's part of the way the Lord is going about it. He's, he's, they ask him, teach us to pray. 
mm-hmm. teach us to do. It's late in their ministry, so this is really interesting because the Lord's already taught a lot about prayer, but yeah. they ask him, and so he says, and he takes them back to what he taught before about the Lord's Prayer. It's a shortened version, but it's still the Lord's Prayer. And um, a key feature of that prayer, which you noted, is that the prayer is a daily prayer. Mm-hmm. By itself, it implies persistence. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it mentions a number of re- things that you persistently are asking God to do. Right? Because in there, you're persistently asking God to glorify his name. Mm-hmm. That he would be glorified. Hallowed be your name. Right? Um, it's a shortened version. It, it does include the idea that daily we're going to have to have our needs met. Daily we're going to have to be forgiven. And I think one that's very important in our day to remember is daily we need to be delivered from the evil one mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. So that in one sense, the The emphasis then is on, uh, keep this up. Mm -hmm. They ask how to pray. Okay, here's the core of what you should pray, but here's the way you should go about it. Mm -hmm. This should be a persistent thing. You've got to ask. You've got to keep on asking. So I think in one sense, and we had talked about this before we started, but in one sense, he's he's thinking about a maintenance feature of life on the one side Mm -hmm. that... um, Think of it with regards to the students at the school. There are prayers that need to be offered for them every single day. Mm -hmm. Same prayer, all right, Um, for the school, for um, my children, my grandchildren. I offer certain prayers on a regular basis. It's not because I see a problem. It's Mm -hmm. because the Lord told me to pray every day that his name would be glorified or he would be honored in their lives, that um, his kingdom would come in their lives, that um, their provisions would be made, that they would be clean day after day, that they would be kept. So in a sense, you're on one side, it's a maintenance type of issue. But it seems that when he gets to the picture, he doesn't go to a maintenance picture. Mm. He goes to a crisis picture. Mm. And it's the man who black the bread was kind of in a social crisis. I mean, yeah. it was very embarrassing. It, it, to be honest, that's all it would be is very embarrassing, but it would be very embarrassing. And you lived in a world where your conduct would be remembered and your small world, this is important to yeah. him that he has failed to be to another friend what he should have been. So he's he's very serious about this. So he's, he's facing a crisis. So there is that dimension. Yeah. The prayer that the prayer. I think one of the things is totally not where we were going to go, but I do have a question for you about it. And it's um, so often in like a crisis situation, there is like uh, some demonic activity right. often behind. And the Lord, even here, it says, lead us not into temptation, which is like, right. keep us from the evil one. It's like, you could translate it that way. Um, I don't feel like we talk a ton about, that aspect of uh, praying, yeah. could we just talk a little bit about it? Because I think there is an aspect in which even the Lord, he, he's combated the evil one, the devil, literally, right. um, in his own ministry. But also, you see this pattern throughout the New Testament and the apostles. They prayed for the churches that like the Lord would keep them. And, they, like, right. and obviously, there is this element of keeping them from the evil one. And... Right. When we're praying for people, when we're persevering in prayer, how, what is that? How does it look like to pray against the evil one in that? Okay, I think the. Uh, I think, Sorry, because this is not at all where yeah, we're going. No, but okay, I but think people is, have questions about. Yeah, that. and that's a very important aspect of it. I think again, if you go back to the prayer, mm-hmm. uh, I've got it memorized from. Matthew, so it's yeah. the expanded version, all right? So he, sh- he shortens it, but some pieces aren't there. Um, this is the way I should be praying every day, okay? for the, This is my general outlook in any circumstance I'm praying for, okay? This is whether it's the school or my family or the nation or missionary. This is the way you pray. The first thing you're doing is praying that God's name is going to be honored. Okay. The 
reason God wants us to pray that way is prayer is part of your life. He's, he's asking us to pray about this because he's asking us to join him. That's the wonder of prayer is that God who can do it himself asks us to join him in accomplishing his purpose. So we, we come in there, so we, we're determined on that. Okay, so we're going for this. We're going for the kingdom of God in those lives. Mm -hmm. All right? In order to get that done, he puts everything in, in place here. I'm going to need provision today, but there's something else I'm going to need. If I am going to go out into a world which is in the control of the devil, mm -hmm. right? That's what it says. the whole yeah. world lies in the lap of the evil one. Now, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but because of the fall of man and because of what we've done, it society now rests in his his hands. That's Paul tells us that. When we were unconverted, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now is working in the sons of disobedience. All right, that's happening out there. Now, God can keep us from him. Mm -hmm. But here's a mystery that, that comes up in the scriptures that we have to, to face. God could save people without me, but he asked me to talk to them. Hmm. And in ministering to them, I have to, um, I pay a price for ministering to people. Mm -hmm. I struggle yeah. with them. Some of them don't come along. Some people kick you. Some people go along with you. But if you get somebody who's in real trouble and you're trying to help them out of that trouble, you're going to go through, this is, you're going to go through mm -hmm. some troubles. Yeah. That's what I consider to be what Paul was talking about when he says, I want to be in the fellowship of the Lord's sufferings. Hmm. Fellowship of his sufferings in moving things from here to here. God could do it without us, mm -hmm. but he doesn't do it without us by his own choice. So he moves us to pray. He moves us to act. Prayer is one of those actions. Hmm. If we get involved in that, we are going to be, um, we're going to be targeted. It's just mm -hmm. that simple. We have now joined an army. That's the way he describes yeah. it in the end of um, Matthew, or excuse me, the end of Ephesians six. Mm -hmm. That we're in a war now. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, you're in a war. And um, whether or not, again, the Lord gives the victory. That's true. But He gives the victory as we trust Him. It's just that's also true, and both sides are in the scriptures. We don't want to take all the responsibility to ourselves, but we're in here with him, and we've had to fellowship with him in this fight. And that's where the prayer that will be kept from the evil one comes up, because we're going to be targeted. Uh, my family's going to be targeted. My work's going to be targeted. I mean, yeah. if I'm, if, and this is where the big if comes in the prayer, this, this all depends first on that my goal is to honor God and have bring his kingdom to pass. Hmm. So yeah. if this is true, then I can count this as true. So I'm asking, I'm told by the Lord to pray this yeah. every day yeah. that I should be kept from the evil one. And of course, that would include everybody that I have responsibility for in prayer. And I think that's also a good thing to remember because it puts the protection in the hands of God because right. he's the one who, because later on, like, or Paul talks about that we don't res wrestle against flesh and blood, but right. against principalities and rulers. And so there's this, um, the idea that like, he's the one who puts this shield of protection right. around us. And, and there's that reliance both for our physical needs, but also for our spiritual one right. and, and trusting him. So I think that, I hope that was helpful. Yeah. Um, and I think another thing, question that could arise is uh, Jesus says pray your kingdom come as in right. the Father's kingdom come God's kingdom come um, that is such a huge part of persevering in prayer because right. it's his will right. not our will but how do we either determine between our desires and his will and and then also how do we align our heart our will with his will how do we go about doing that okay well first part it comes from that prayer that first of all I make the determination on a daily basis I think that prayer is just really important to come back to daily that I am going to accomplish the purpose of God right we, we've said it with a lot of things um, Paul in Romans 6 I'm 
dead to sin, I'm alive to God. To be alive to God is not only that we have the chance to know God, but we've now been brought into the kingdom of God. We're part of a program. The program is going on and has been going on some for way back, but I get to participate in that. Okay, so um, I have to align myself to that in a general way. Right? That, that's the first step. If I don't have a determination, if I haven't come to the place where my heart is given to doing that will, then I don't think you're going to know. I mean, no matter what kind of mm-hmm. advice we give. Right? Now, once I am thinking that way, I then look at my life and my circumstances completely differently. I am now concerned, oh, what's, where's God? in all this where is he where is he in my life where is he in my family's life Mm -hmm. where is he in again for the school here where is he in the the student's life what has to happen and again it's at that point as I'm looking at it from God's perspective and I'm staying in the Word of God I keep again Mm -hmm. as we said over and over again I need to be staying in the Word of God so I stay um, godly in my thinking. Mm -hmm. And just covering it. Then what does God want? Mm -hmm. What's He after? What is happening to that person? That's when I think you begin. You can't say it comes in a certain way. Yeah. All right. I don't give any formula for it, but if your heart's lined up with it and you're sticking with the Word of God and you're sticking with the Word of God in order you might know. Mm-hmm. You're going to begin to see, hey, this is happening here. Yeah. That's not God. Yeah. And then there has to be this, you know, then that's where we, we focus. Yeah, well, and then that's where we focus more on our, and persevering, like, this is, yeah. Right. Like you said, like, Lord, you have to do this. I think asking that question, I've heard you ask, like, like what is the Lord doing? Where is he at work? Right. Okay, well, it seems like he's at work over here, and then... And following through, like, okay, then we need to align ourselves with this right. because God is over here doing something and right. and obviously then we should trust him in that area. Right. Um and I think that also kind of goes to a little bit of like um question of like discernment. Um right. because like if if God is over here working, then he the like, discerning what is the will of God in those areas. But I guess my other question is, how do you know whether or not it's your will or or God's will? Because um, some of us are really strong will, and you, and you can almost will yourself like, no, this is the Lord's will, but it, it really isn't. Like, how do you, is there any cautions to, um, to that? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's a, well, it's a good heart. It's a good question. Yeah. And we all face it, you know, because if I'm going to persevere in prayer for this, how do I know this is from God? Yeah. All right. Um, I think the first step, I mean, the first thing is that's a learned, mm. it's a learned thing. I, that's what I believe, mm. that you keep, you keep studying the Word of God. You keep committing yourself over and over again this, that if, Again, you commit yourself by every day, presenting yourself to God as an instrument of righteousness. And then you will learn. Mm. And I would say, and I think it's it's one of those facts that we all have to face, that sometimes we learn by blowing it. Mm. We just we were sure that God was going to do this, and he didn't do it. Mm. Um, when I was first starting, I, that was very discouraging if I couldn't get it right. Yeah. I couldn't get it right if I prayed the wrong way. And if it didn't happen, well, then should I go on? I was kind of dumb, you know, at the yeah. time. I guess it was just, it's just one of those features of life we tend to, at the beginning. But after a while, you figure out that, yeah, I am kind of dumb. And if I'm going to know the purposes of God, I'm going to have to walk with them. And I'm going to have to admit where, okay, that really wasn't mm-hmm. God. Yeah, That was not and I have to have the humility at that point to say, okay, what do I learn from all that? Mm-hmm. And after a while, I think as, as you keep doing that over a long period of time, and you watch where you were right, mm-hmm. where did God answer? Then you begin to learn. I can't say what you'll learn because that 
that's your that's your yeah. walk my walk you know um, how are we gonna figure it out i think it's just a learned thing yes yeah, it comes like, to pass process of abiding in the lord right. like staying daily in his word but also staying daily like through prayer like right. that we we are in his presence and there's like that abiding aspect and i think um yeah that's helpful because it can be it can be challenging like on the especially on the front of like what is the will of god and we've talked about it in like those right. podcasts that i think we did too i think anyways um on that aspect but when it comes to to asking and keeping on asking um Sometimes it can be also challenging because it seems like there isn't an answer. Um, something doesn't come to pass right. when we want, when we are praying to that end. Um, and there can be discouragement. And I think you talked a little bit about that, like having humility in that aspect of, of discerning the will of God. But how would, what would you say to the person who's maybe discouraged? They've been asking and, and nothing's coming to pass. Without knowing, without a yeah, you don't have any examples. um, So, uh, a question would come up again. If the person's in there again, first of all, that's where we go back to our basic principles of prayer. Mm -hmm. The God we're addressing knows our need. Mm. Okay, He knows what has to be done. Yeah. All right. Second thing, He also is for us. Assuming that we have committed ourselves into His hands, He's for us. So that even if I'm if I'm inaccurate in in my prayers, that is in my particulars of the request, mm-hmm. all right, I can still trust him. Mm. I can't get discouraged about that, but I want to know because I want to know how to trust God for individuals who are in trouble. Right? Yeah. What, what, how are we going to address this? But um, but I can't get I can't get discouraged, and I can't let Fail failure with regards to a question in prayer, seeming failure with regards to that. Alter my attitude towards God. That's where the danger comes. Mm-hmm. Can't because he's already he, he does love <laughs> your father knows. Yeah. All right. And and sometimes again, and this is where, well, you know, it, it's my own. It's the way I believe Paul was addressing. In uh, us in um, Romans chapter eight, hmm. that we don't know how to pray as we ought. Mm-hmm. At our best, we don't know how to pray as we ought. Yeah. But when I am, I won't go back to that verse to expound. But when I am praying, and I'm concerned, and the issue there is God's ability to save and the curse that's real. Mm-hmm. And the collision of those two things, God's ability, that's what prayer is all about. In, in intercession, there is a purpose of God to be fulfilled, and there is a curse on the situation, and you are, in, you are grappling with that. Yeah. I do believe that if you grapple with that, even if I miss it completely, the Spirit of God changes it. He hears mm-hmm. the prayer. I just believe that mm-hmm. because he hears our heart. And then we might find out later on that, oh, yeah, it was answered. It just wasn't answered the way I thought it would be answered. Mm-hmm. All right. I think that again, people are not too big on the law of first mentioned. But anyway, yeah. it's one that I've, I've always found to be very helpful. Mm-hmm. The very first intercession of the Bible, Abraham asked for the deliverance of Sodom mm-hmm. because he was concerned about Lot. He got up one morning and Sodom was in ruins. He does not know that his prayer was answered Mm. because it says in the word there that, and the Lord remembered Abraham and took Lot out. So the prayer that the heart of Abraham's prayer was answered. Mm. The details of his request were not answered. Yeah. But God heard him. Yeah. All right. And I think that, that we need to keep that. That's the first intercession of the Bible. Hmm. First time we have a prayer, it was in one sense a failure, in another sense it was successful. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure we don't have any record that Abraham ever had any contact with Lot. Hmm. 
he may never have known mm-hmm. what happened. Now, again, it probably wasn't that way, but we don't have them coming back together again. Yeah. Right. So, um, I think that has to be. Yeah, that's. Be I think that's so helpful because I think when the Lord is, He sees our heart. Right. And to remember that and to remind ourselves of that, both as an encouragement but also a promise, He He knows us and He knows our de- the desires of our heart. And if if we're praying in according with His will, the details, He'll work those out. Right. And then- but but the heart is what, and like I love that example of um, Abraham because his heart ultimately was for Lot's safety, right? And Lot's protection and God's glory in that. And yeah, and yeah. he did, and he pulled him out, and he yeah. glorified himself. So I think that's a, a helpful reminder, and I think that's an encouragement also that going back to the kind of the beginning is that the Lord uses us in um, to accomplish His will, right? And there's that verse in Ezekiel. We don't have to go over too much of it, but I think it's a helpful reminder because it's a time of crisis. But he, it's the verse communicates that the Lord is seeking people to stand in the gap, to petition, right. to intercede. Um, and in a way, Abraham is a great example of that right. um, instance of interceding, of standing in the gap. And But also I feel like that's an encouragement to us that, God is seeking people to intercede. He's seeking people to right. um, pray in those really tough circumstances. And the details may not be accomplished the way that we view them, but God sees our heart and he's right. encouraged by that. And we should be encouraged right. by that. Um, right. And that's a, that's a tremendous example um, because it goes right down to what we were saying. Mm-hmm. Why did God not find a person? That's yeah, it's a long it's passage. Right. He doesn't find a person because nobody in all of the the categories. It's a pre-alliterated uh, message here. The the people, the priests, the princes, the prophets. Mm. They all had a role. They should have been involved in the things of God, but they weren't. That's that was the condition of the day. Mm. They were all selfish. Mm. So the priests were selfish. The prophets are selfish. The princes are selfish, and then of course the people themselves are selfish. So that. Nobody, when this was happening, was conditioned to a place where they saw this big gap that had to be filled. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find anybody because nobody cared. Yeah. And that's why, again, as we're thinking about it, if we want to prepare our hearts to be involved in this, then the thing is we have to come back day after day to that place where what matters in my life is his glory, mm-hmm. not my well-being today. Mm-hmm. And I have to pray that, say, I'm praying that for you. I pray that for all my grandchildren. That, hey, what matters in your life isn't your happiness. What matters is his glory. What matters is his kingdom comes. What matters is that somehow his purposes be done there. And then you pray that if you can keep your heart in that condition with respect to thing, I believe God will point out to you where to pray. Mm-hmm. I think he just brings it. You'll just say focus here. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he, a voice. I'm just saying it. You will see that. Oh wow! This, if this takes place, this is a disaster. Mm-hmm. This can't take place. If this took place, God's will could be accomplished, so that He He turns us into that. Mm-hmm. But it depends on where we're at, at the beginning. Yeah. He can't do that if I'm thinking about what's best for me today and how am I going to enjoy the day and how am I going to. You know, mm-hmm. and how can I, you know, how can my my friends become famous or yeah. be happy or whatever? Yeah. I've got to be aligned with God's purposes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, aligning. And so I think what you're saying is like aligning our hearts to the Lord is is one of the first steps in, in persevering in prayer. Right. Um, Amen. Because if our heart is not aligned to him, then not really persevering in prayer and <laughs> at all no. because you you can't because you're ultimately you're after your own glory you're after something right. other than his will right and when we persevere in prayer ultimately we're praying towards his end and, right. and we're trying to align our desires and our will with his will um so yeah i hope that's yeah encouraging do you have anything else you want to add on yeah, that i think that that's the big thing it's a, it's a wonderful thing he's he's asked us in our little circumstances mm-hmm. uh to join him in what he's building. Yeah. 
And I think, and that also is like one other point is that we in our lives, we don't have a lot of, most of our lives are pretty simple. (laughs) They're not super complicated. I mean, they're complicated to us, but ultimately they don't have world impacts. No. But that doesn't change the value of of the perseverance and the prayer towards the end, towards God's will. And I think we as individuals in our circumstances have the unique ability. We're some of the only people that are really involved in in these circumstances. I mean, like most people don't know about our lives or about right. this or about. And so we have these small circles of, I think you use this like language small circles of like influence right and um and because of that we have an obligation we have a duty right to like this is where i have influence and so this is where i'm called to persevere in prayer right. um Amen. because it can be overwhelming to think of all the things right out there <laughs> that we could persevere in prayer yeah. towards that end but ultimately most people aren't going to know about you know this person struggle in their life, but maybe three people do. And you right. happen to be one of those people. True. Um, and so there's an encouragement there that your life, your prayer life matters because you have the opportunity to influence that person or that circumstance right. for the glory of God towards his will. And you're one of a few people right. maybe that has that right. opportunity. So, um, so yeah, so there's an encouragement on both ends. Yeah. So um, anyways, Anything else? No, no, I yeah. think that's a good conclusion because it, knowing that my life is where God wants me to be and He's put me here, and all I have to do is be faithful here. Yeah, just be faithful in that, and great blessing can come from all that mm. if I yeah. will trust Him in the very in the actual circumstances I find myself. Yeah, amen. Yeah, so uh, our encouragement to you, I guess, is that look at your own life and and persevere where the lord is is at work like look at where he's at work and then observe it and 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 see how and how in that situation it can um further the kingdom of god how he's at work and then persevere in prayer in that in that direction so um as always you can listen to all of our previous podcasts everywhere that you find podcasts apple Podcasts, youtube and spotify you can follow us across our social media channels. And until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And we'll see you again then.